Good evening and welcome. My name is Jing Yuan Zhang, and I am the host for this evening's Daniel's talk, Paysage Jill Saucier. First, I wish to acknowledge this land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. We recognize that people are coming from all over the world this year as we transition to this new normal. We encourage you to find out the indigenous history of the land that you currently call home. We are grateful to all those that came before us. Joining us today is Jill Saucier, graduated from the School of Architecture at University of Laval in 1982. Soon after, he established the Montreal architectural firm Saucier and Perrault Architects, a multidisciplinary practice internationally renowned for its institutional, cultural, and residential projects. Since 1990, he has been a visiting professor and an invited critic at several Canadian and American universities. As design partner, he is responsible for the design integrity of all projects with specific attention given to architecture's connection to geology and the landscape. In 2002, his firm represented Canada at the prestigious architecture Biennale of Venice. In 2014, Jill Saucier and his partner Andre Perrault were the first recipients of the new Prix du Quebec for design and architecture, the Prix Ernest Cormier. They are also the recipients of the 2018 gold medal for the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada. Beginning in 2002, the Canadian Center for Architecture began archiving a large selection of drawings and models produced by the firm. The format for today's event will be a presentation from Jill Saucier with time at the end for a Q&A. This lecture is being recorded and broadcast on our YouTube channel. Please turn off your camera if you do not wish to be recorded. We ask that you keep yourself on mute throughout the presentation. During the Q&A, please type your questions in the chat. Alternatively, you can identify yourself in the chat as someone who wants to ask a question and we can unmute you. I would now like to invite Jill Saucier. So good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be uh, presenting today. Uh, thank you to uh, Eric, uh, and, uh, Audrey, and Treasure for being there. They are part of the class we're giving with uh, Greg Dorf and Christian Joachim in, uh, uh, as a research thesis project for uh, Daniel's uh, School of Architecture. So it's a real pleasure. In, in a way, the, the, the lecture today is connected to what we are doing in that class, exploring the notion of the Anthropocene and the connection with nature. So the name of the, the presentation is Paysage. Paysage is landscape, the inspiring environment around us. But Paysage is also history, transformation, mediation, and evolution. 
Any place in an evolution of an environment and architecture can reflect that. Buildings connect into a site and capture and contribute to the evolution of time. Nature and geology, architecture that are at once anchored in their physical context, but also to a broader social and cultural topography. But this relation to the territory goes beyond a pure celebration of so-called natural elements or the expression of a regional architecture. It can be more precisely characterized by a constant re reinterpretation of landscape in relation to architecture. Here we find geology, topography, and vegetation inextricably linked to the conceptualization of architectural projects. I will read a small text for a few minutes. Don't worry, it's not too long. In the research and thesis studio I'm teaching here this year with Greg Newdorf and Christian Joachim, we are investigating this very notion, reconsidering architecture's place, not in, but of the natural world. The students are researching a fundamental element of nature and its implication on architecture, creating objects inf influenced by this research to later inform a building that draws open the in this inspiration through nature, natural processes, geology, thermodynamics, and technology. We are exploring how we can grow or breed a urban architectural intervention to create new environments that are truly part of their physical context. We are focusing on how to develop an intuition for architecture that can give creative form to a building frameworks and infrastructures, creating new possibilities for perception and experience, what we are calling a long view into nature. We are living through a time of precise awareness of our impact on earth and the scale of human influence on climate and geology. The artificial gap between nature and humankind has been closed and architecture is only beginning to grapple to grapple uh, with the immense responsibility of uh, realigning our profession's thinking. The magnitude of our actions and influence is such that it is now generally accepted that we are living through a human-driven period in the herd, climatic and geologic history. And while we are implicated in climate change, we can also reconnect with nature and our future to sculpt a new herd. The fields of architecture, urbanism, and geology are each concerned with the creation of our physical world. Geology is the study of pressure and time. There are physical forces that build landforms, and they are those that erode or modify them. Architecture is human-activated geology. It reshapes the herd, alters landscape, redirects energy flows, and changes the composition of our atmosphere. But the creative force of architecture is human activity. We are recognizing that human processes are affecting natural geology. Indeed, our city, our infrastructure, and even our landfill are part of the geological record. Buildings are a geological agent and architecture a geological force. Perhaps architecture today can form a boundary in the sedimentary rock of architectural history where the profession realigns itself to be a force of focused, positive growth. And what represent the notion of positive growth more appropriately than the tree? Trees metaphorically relate to architecture in a lot of ways. They are a symbol of growth, strength, and steadiness, but also of fragility and adaptability. They they also refer to a spatiality and temporality that can be assimilated to architectural objects. And due to their durability, their unwavering presence, they are inextricably sorry, linked to primitive forms of habitation. Trees provide shelter, but more, there is a tremendous inspiration and, and knowledge in the studying of the processes that influence a tree growth it ad its adaptability and its structure. They synthesize the ephemeral and sometimes unconspicuous qualities of a time and a place. And that we believe is immensely relevant to architecture. 
they can be considered a significant contextual element that influence sighting and volumetry, First Nation Pavilion, amongst other projects, and Murray Edwards Science Building at John Abbott College, Lewis Farm Community Recreation Central Library, Academic Center, and District Park in Edmonton. They can be used as a metaphorical image, speaking of a building presence and growth, and serve as a contextual framework to shape a building organization. It's anchoring to the site and specialization of its flows of energy, like in projects like the UBC Faculty of Pharmaceutical Science, CDRD, FP Innovation Research Center on Wood Use Research, and Gabriel Roy Library in Quebec City. There is also an, an importance in searching for the nature of a site and the ground on which there will be building. There will be a building. Every site is complex, but the interest lies in discovering different layers, understanding the place, and finding something that can evolve into a potential project. So I will. I choose several projects that uh, extend from the year uh, 2000 to the, the, the present. Uh, the importance of the, of the first project I'm going to talk to you about today refers to the notion of territory. Uh, we're talking here about the First Nation Pavilion, Pavilion a project that was uh, created and built around 2000 to celebrate the Great Peace of Montreal uh, that uh, occurred in 2001. Uh, the site is in a uh, botanical garden, so it's a kind of an artificial forest that's referred to, to uh, different type of environment we can find in the, in Quebec, because the pavilion was uh, was built and created to uh, to in a way represent twelve different nations that uh, occupy the territory uh, from north to south. So south be representing in a way the deciduous forest, and the north the more conifer forest. So the first uh, image I'm showing you today is almost smoke weaving uh, uh, between the trees. A very symbolic presence of the of the of the of, of that notion of the presence of people into the natural environment, but also when we start looking at uh, at this project, uh, we were looking for a link between the different nations and what else than territory movement into the territory, for more sedentary uh, nation uh, from the tan to the lake and for the more nomadic. Uh, in very, very long distance. So we found in the middle of, uh, of this, uh, in between those two forests, a path that we simply represent by elevating it three meters in the air to create a space which became uh, disconnected from the actual time to, at the end, contain different artifacts, different objects that were made with uh, vegetation and with uh, uh, that represent the art of the, on, of the fir First Nation. So we didn't want to enclose that uh, exhibition space into uh, a nice box with, uh, with, uh, with light, but uh, instead keeping it totally connected to the nature. This project is, a re is really a funding uh, project in that uh, concern about the connection with the, uh, with the environment. So the first model expressed that very simple idea of the casting of a ground, which you elevate three meters in the air to create that space. Going back to this, uh, to this representation. So the plan is very simple. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interior space on the, on the left to contain the different services and a transparent building just composed of a series of posts disorganized like a forest will be. Uh, through, uh, using a uh, curtain steel post and uh, a spa another space at the other end for services. So it's a very, very simple project. But the idea here was to, to create what we called at the time a non-space, a space which is fully disconnected to the time and to the environment in which to make it even more connected. So people go through the building freely from one side you can see on the left the deciduous forest changing color in the fall season, and on the right, the, the conifer forest. That uh, curve represents something that we found on the site, like uh, a creek going through that was uh, that was uh, controlled. 
in the in the time. So we kind of reinterpret it as a as a movement in the, in the actual roof, all made of a cast in place uh, concrete. Here you can see the artifact, the different objects which are exhibited through all year. So people can have access to that uh, space uh, all year long and uh, connect to the to the different space. The texture in that case was deliberately made uh, as something that that is very much handmade. So the cast in place concrete using uh, planks to, uh, to to give texture uh, to it. And then we shift uh, 16, 16 years in time. Uh, the Lewis Farm recreational uh, place. Uh, th this is an interesting project in the, in the suburb of Edmonton. Uh, we were asked to, to design a quite large project which deals with uh, different activity, uh, including a sport facility, pool, two arenas, a library, a community center, a school, uh, all together on that uh, piece uh, of site. And you can, you can already admire the division of the, of the territory. So that project has to be seen at distance because it deals with the idea, with its size, but also with its scale with a, a, a much uh, broader or larger notion of territory. And you can find uh, here in the aerial view, some uh, uh, elements on the, on the site, like little pods of tree, uh, probably accumulation of rocks that at the end were covered with vegetation and eventually with trees. That's referred to a certain sign you find in the landscape as an indication of what should be the project seen at uh, at that distance so we also we can also refer to the circular irrigation system and agricultural feed will well, in agricultural fields that we find in the west um, that uh, mark the, the paysage with a beautiful circle that superimpose to each other or even the cree medicine wheel which are which very part very much part of the culture of uh, the first nation that uh, the that lives in the uh, in the area so we kind of interpret this idea by saying how can we group the different function around a, a hill of grass covered by a large circle that would refer to those uh, to those four and in the same time, keep the project being seen and recognizable at different scale. Uh, with a project of that size, if you stand by, it will be difficult to, to understand it, uh, to, all, uh, to understand all the components of it. Uh, so we, we, uh, uh, we stayed on that idea of uh, how can we address a, a, wide, a broader notion of territory by, by using uh, the circle. Uh, this is a funny image, but it says a lot about the idea of movement within the circle, like the energy which is gener generated by the presence of people, by the presence of different action which are uh, co constrained into that uh, very uh, precise uh, circle. So what we did is we grew the different function around a, a circular shape, which is uh, slice and cut a little bit to, to accommodate different function uh, and uh, at the end resume the, 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 the function within a central, a very clear central element. So in the landscape, the, the, the building will look almost like it's emerging from a, an artificial hill to again reconnect to its environment or create a new environment. The circle will then appear in different format to uh, to express the presence of the of the function. So when we, uh, we you see it from the sky, uh, there is a, there is apart from the two arenas you see the, you see in the background, which represent in a way the emerging presence of two high C object coming out of the ground, the or the school that emerge in the front part. Everything is contained within or under the actual ground, including the, the pool area, area, which is under that slope with the cir circular cut in, in it. So in that model, you, you, can, you can appreciate the, the, the size of this uh, enormous, uh, enormous project, 
which at the end offers all kinds of entrance because there is something like four different ways of entering into the building. There's no point that you can enter in just from only one direction. So it's fully connected, including a land which is used for exterior sports facility and a slope which creates a possibility for slides or for all kinds of exterior activity through all years. The, the circle, uh, we, we use that expression, which is quite uh, finely, uh, that, we, that we call the, uh, a sun turbine. Uh, it's uh, in, in a way by using, uh, as I showed before, louvers directed to, uh, to the different orientation of the sun. We kind of activate, almost make this circle to be in action within the actual, the actual space. So the plan, uh, which looks quite complex, it's because it's all contained for most of it underground, will we'll include the two arenas, the pool area and the, the a library, the school and the, the, the different element of administration and, uh, and services, but all group around uh, a, a central shape that will bring people together. And you can see uh, the relation with the, the, the watch movement I was showing, because in, inside there is a protected running track. There is some uh, space for uh, sport and the movement of the building activate the presence of people, but activate the space in its connection, uh, in uh, their connection with the, 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 what I call the sun turbine just before. So you can see the different movement inside of the, of the building. And the roof, uh, which uh, offers a skylight and a solar panel to make it uh, even more important in the, in the landscape and its potential to capture energy from the exterior world. So arriving from uh, one direction, you can see the sun turbine and uh, the school on the right with the, the central entrance of this side of the, of the building. In the winter time, also the, the surrounding of the building will, will be used for skating and all kinds of exterior activity. So it becomes fully integrated in all, uh, all season. So some image that shows uh, everything that we have to consider the continuity of the, of the landscape through architectural element that are uh, in a way representative of the, of the, uh, the vegetation entering within the, the, the building the wind turbine. So interior space are complex and simple because you have that circle with a, a series of V-shaped roof uh, that brings light within the actual space and the running track, which has a very, very strong presence in the, in the space, making people to understand the nature of the building as something which deals with movement and action. gymnasium area, pool area, partially underground. You can still see the, the circular roof at the top. Arena area and library. Geology. I, uh, I took that image very nearby my country place where, where I am now, by the way, I'm just standing in uh, nearby this, uh, this beautiful forest. And uh, I found that image that for me represent the idea of the action of nature on geology and the opposite. The resistance of the rock, but also its fragility that can be changed. And uh, I can, you can move by hand piece, a little piece of that rock, or you can let nature to infiltrate it and at the end, make it to disappear. This is an important image to, uh, to refer to the next part of the, of the presentation. A project of 2012, uh, the Tippet Art uh, and Music uh, Center, which is in Montana. It's a result of a competition. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can imagine a 100,000 acre piece of land. This is difficult to imagine, but uh, you'd never see the limit of it. If you stand in the middle, you, you don't feel anything else than, uh, than that beautiful landscape. But what characterizes mostly this, uh, this landscape, and you can see the portion of the site marked by the red line and uh, kind of a triangular, square triangular shape in the, in the middle. 
what characterizes this site is the beautiful minerality or geology of it. So you will find some amazing uh, uh, volcanic rock on, on the site that we can also relate because when I took this photo uh, visiting the site, at distance, I thought that this was rocks and then you approach and you see uh, uh, you see that they are at the end cows uh, occupying the land and very, very few trees that you see in the background of the, of the site. The same for this image, which really talks about how the geology of the site was transformed through its extensive use for, uh, for uh, nourishing the, the cows and, uh, and, uh, and to... So now it's rejuvenating to something more uh, natural and the client asked us to design a, a, a art facility which is composed of a music center some studio for artists and exterior space for for music so we were very inspired by those images saying that how can we not disturb this piece of land by referring more to to natural element you'll find on the site so how can we compose uh, uh, a site on a kind of a triangular shape, having on the top left the music center, on the right top the, 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 the artist studio and uh, uh, an exterior uh, amphitheater for music using the slope to naturally reintegrate the, those two elements into landscape. So it's a very, very simple sketch to refer to the previous image. How can we build rock? How can we make sure that the, that people seeing this from a certain distance will notice building, but will assimilate them or uh, think that they are in fact a rock formation, not to disturb too much the presence of the actual site. So through a series of sketch, we found a way to attach the building in slope and to make them almost like you elevate a rock from the actual ground to create a space. That very, very simple gesture of distancing a rock from, from the ground to create a new space. It refers in a way to the origin of space that we referred to previously in my reading, which is, uh, which is about the, the, the idea of a space that exists already by the displacement of geologic element on the actual site. Uh, so you can see again that triangular shape that brings together on the left the, the music center on, and on the right the, the, the art studio facility. So it, it very much referred to that idea of a space is exist already by the simple distance of a rock from the actual ground plane that becomes an abri, uh, a cavern in a way. So we, we inspire ourselves from that uh, very simple notion for, uh, in a way, it's acoustical potential, acoustical quality, but the fact that uh, you will continue to be fully in connection with the actual landscape. So you can admire the view or the, the quality of that site, which is absolutely amazing. So the object stands, elevate itself from the ground to, to create, to contain all the technique, technique of the building and the thickness of the actual ground and the space which is created under this. Uh, I like this view, the deer is beautiful. Uh, on, on this size, because there is snow in, uh, in Montana. So the landscape changed, not that much because there is very little snow, but all the surface, the topographic surface become white at the difference of the previous image in, in which you feel a more goldy or green, uh, green, uh, green color. So every space was created with, the, with this idea of excavating or cracking a rock, making life to appear into it. Uh, doing all the plan, for example, this one attached to the to the slope of the of the of the the, the land to emerge at the end as a architectural shape. So then they can contain more precious object, like in that case a small concert hall for piano, and the shape referring to the the presence of the, the geologic element on the on the site.
This is uh, the piano concert hall with an amazing view on the actual site. Uh, this is a real view, by the way, because we went on site and took photo of the actual uh, connection with uh, the site. The, the, the artist studio stands uh, a bit remote from the, the first, uh, for the first building, uh, composed of two elements superimposing together as a place to live, but also to, to, to uh, do art or play, uh, play uh, a musical instrument. I like this view because it says a lot about the very, very simple presence of a mineral object within the, the, uh, the land and how the studio, studio deals with the, the space. This is a, one of the stu pra practice studio for piano connected again to the, to the landscape. A project that we uh, finish in, uh, in 2015, but start, start in 2011, uh, the, the CESM, which is uh, the soccer stadium in Montreal, which had to be built on uh, an amazing site uh, that you see on the top, that little beige spot, which is uh, the original image of the Miron Quarry, uh, a place which was uh, uh, in, in, uh, that was used to build Montreal in a way because this is where they were collecting gray stone to build Montreal. And as a gift back, we send them, we send it garbage. So we fill it with garbage for 40 years, creating a new ground made of, uh, of waste, which is a, a drama in a way, but uh, the, the authority of the city of Montreal decided to make it the second park in size of uh, Montreal. So it became back uh, recently, the Frederick Back Park. Uh, for those who don't, who don't know Frederick Back, is, uh, he, 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 he was doing animation film uh, among uh, the l'homme qui plantait des arbres, the man who was planting trees, which is about this idea of recreating environment from a dead environment. Uh, so we were asked to to build. Uh, you see the you see on the, the green surface, which is the park being built, and on top of that uh, white spot in the middle of the image to create a soccer stadium uh, of a large type. And what is the soccer stadium in this case? It's not really a stadium. This is the way they call it, but it's a practice area. So just an interior soccer field and an exterior soccer field that has to be built in that, uh, on the edge of that location. So on the top sketch you see here, uh, because it's the second park in size, you probably know Montreal, it's, it's made of that beautiful mountain uh, and around that beautiful mountain with a cross on, at the top. So I made that simple, simple sketch that says, if we are dealing here with a concave and a convex park. So I plant a, uh, across at the bottom of this uh, new park and trace a little horizontal line in between. So that line means a connection between two parts, a bit like a connection with that new geology, a strata that will delaminate from the actual ground to uh, express that uh, possible connection. For sure, the, the two parks are very distant from each other, but we thought that symbolically we can achieve uh, uh, that symbolic connection with it. And also, uh, this is an image of the, of the site seen from Papineau Street. It's a very, very long site and uh, which looks very beautiful. In fact, I'm standing in the middle of a, of a very, very intense road, uh, doing photos one by one, walking to my way to the, uh, to the site. So we really wanted to keep those trees. Uh, to make sure that uh, if we are to build on the site, not destroying the, 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 the vegetation that we find on site and make sure that the project will look almost like it's emerging from... Uh, from... Also, uh, we were on the edge. You see the trees on the back and the, the space in between is the site that we had to build. And also on site, the, the, the authority wanted to keep uh, uh, traces of the use of the site. So this is an artificial cliff. Uh, the vertical line referred to when you do blasting. So you drill hole vertically to, to blast the rock and to be able to use it in, 
in a, and bring it to uh, other location. So they wanted to keep this. So we were very uh, interested by the site because we were very nearby this pure representation of 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 the, the different life of a of a space which was dramatically transformed through years. The other transformation the project brings to is social uh, about social aspect because Saint Michel, in which it's built, is a uh, is a poor area and uh, an area that suffers from uh, different problem. Uh, the project is uh, is uh, has become a way to bring people together. Soccer is appreciated by different community that can then group into this building and share something that they appreciate. Uh, very, very much. So it's an agent of a, of a social uh, connection in a, in a way. So you see the site from the quarry. Uh, it's difficult to locate, but it's there. You know. So when we we start working on the on the project, I I start by by doing that kind of delaminating ground, and we wanted to use wood as a way to create again that connection with the park. A positive use of what is created by Hurt, but also because it was a very simple way to approach the question of creating a structure which extends on the site uh, 15 meter in the air and also with a span between columns of uh, around 65 meters. So uh, wood was the solution for this uh, for this site. So you see a little bit in the early sketch how the, uh, the, that new ground elevate from the actual original ground to represent the st strata of ground, but also in a very simple way, create a space which is in full connection with the environment. So this is what uh, we imagine starting the project that will be in a pure space uh, so, uh, covered by that uh, beautiful uh, wood structure. Uh, the paper model, this is uh, something I, I did write uh, early at the, the beginning of the project, which says, how does, how can a roof slowly go down on the left to two arms to become bleachers from an exterior soccer field? So, uh, <clears throat> so in one gesture, you have to, you you, you can understand the, the different aspect of, of the project. So you see on the right, the interior soccer field and on the left, the exterior, uh, all created in one specific movement of a surface transforming in two arms to connect everything together, uh, uh, offering a, a, at the time a pure continuity and a quite long building on the side because the building asks for something which was not only on a, an object on the side, but something which is fully anchored to the to the to to represent something of a of a different dimension. So, uh, early model of the of the the complex, and you can see now uh, how it stands. The park now has been developed and, and is quite nice. This is a photo from two thousand sixteen, I think. So it emerged from the trees and my, my hope is the tree will grow enough so that you will notice only a kind of a slab of a, of a gray material emerging from the, uh, uh, from the trees uh, because then it will re-anchor to the, to the natural, uh, natural environment. This is how the project is composed. So the plan is very simple, services in the long bar, in a berm, uh, protecting from the 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 Papineau Street, which is at the bottom of the plan, and the quarry, which is at the top, with the bleacher is extending from two arms, uh, the the central space. From Papineau Street, this is from the quarry, from Papineau. Street with all the trees and the result, which uh, extend uh, like the left part being the services, which are mostly con contained in the berm and the wood structure that you can see uh, on the right. So this is the arrival of the of the building, a very 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 uh, shallow slope that uh, that that uh, that goes up one floor 
to enter into the building and then to go back into a very transparent and, uh, and pure space. So you start seeing a vertical line on the building because the exterior cladding is made of uh, uh, zinc. Uh, we found that material for its mineral quality, but also because the joint, vertical joint, refers to that image of the cliff, the, the famous vertical uh, traces of blasting that you find on the on the, the cliff, which is right at the left of the of the building. So the, 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 the glass part disappear into landscape to leave only the, the strata of uh, mineral material to elevate from the ground and to to uh, to create that space that that space that becomes almost virtual then at with certain light. The connection with the two arms protecting the exterior, creating gates. The triangular gate shape is is a way for people to go through the building to go to the uh, to the Frederick Back Park. Uh, it was very important for the client, and we thought that this was a way to disconnect and connect the two elements together. So you see the deformation of the of the roof to become two arms to contain on one side the. The, the 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 team uh, shed and on the other side the uh, the bleachers and the connection between uh, the interior uh, so the project is so large that it, it it's again something that has to reconnect to landscape in uh, in a larger larger scale interior space very transparent and open to the environment and the wood structure four meter high uh, structure that spans 65 meter in the air so the use of wood was really appropriate so but we use it in a way that it, it, it's going to look very disorganized and not on not only a line on structure but something that offers uh, more this idea of a strata than a system which is uh, repetitive. In the uh, same year, we, 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 in that notion of the geology, we were asked to design a, a sport facility in Saint Laurent, uh, nearby uh, it's one of the Arrondissement Montreal. So I was very inspired by that simple image, the accumulation uh, of water in, uh, in a rock formation. If you just pour a little more water, you're gonna end up with a, a bigger object. Uh, and it, it, it's almost like a mirror to the sky and to the vegetation, which is, uh, which is on top. But it ties the dynamic of its transformation depending on the amount of water. So I made the reference to that when we, we start working on the project. So this is kind of the first sketch that says, how can we make buildings that looks that they are activated on site, almost like, uh, uh, if the force of the ground freezing, defreezing, will move object in and out. We all know that. We'll know that rocks move so at the top of the, of the ground because of the natural forces, uh, water, the presence of water or vegetation. So how can I use that idea to, to, to make a building that will look dynamic on site, to represent a little bit the kinetic nature of people moving and... Uh, uh, creating energy within the, uh, within the building. So the two components were on the left, a white tower uh, containing pool area, and on the right, uh, an interior soccer stadium for, uh, for the arrondissement. So, so we found a way using the envelope and the movement of the facade to, to, to address that question of representing the movement of the building, but also by the fact that people were allowed to go in between those two vol volume, walking or cycling through a ramp in between the building to continue in the be beautiful park, which is just on the back of the, of the building. So the plan is at the end, complex and simple, soccer on the right, pool on the left, with services in the middle contained within a ground. Uh, so we don't notice them, but we notice the volume of the pool in white and on the, of the soccer on the, on, uh, on the left and the soccer stadium on the right. Uh, this is the art piece that uh, represents the same thing, almost like uh, an horizon datum that uh, 
that makes those objects to look stable and unstable in the same time. So you can trace a line between them, but they are unstable in a way because they, uh, they are in all kinds of direction. But how you address the building, we, we deliberately create something that cannot be understood from the outside to, to represent, the, in a way, this, uh, this idea of, uh, of object, mineral object on the site, and then people discover the, the site by approaching the... So you see the beginning of the ramp that will end up on that uh, roof in between the two uh, white and black volume, the entrance that says uh, the entrance. Uh, in some kind of obscure uh, uh, representation, but uh, this is what I, I wanted to do. I, I wanted to make something which, uh, which doesn't say everything by approaching the building. For sure, at night, it changed quite, uh, quite a lot. From the park, the, the hill that brings people through or in between the two volumes, that says about the same thing. I like this image because it gives you a little bit of the scale of, uh, of what, uh, what, we, uh, what we did. So just an opening, some kind of a cloudy, melting object on the, life, on the, the left to represent the ice, the melting of the ice, and the soccer on, on the right, very, again, open on the, uh, on the environment. So a limited palette of material to make sure that we understand, that we understand the, the ground nature of the, the way to move through the building and the two elements that are grouped together with some uh, vibrating color of cotton steel on the skylight in between the building. But inside, you will find uh, a very colorful object that, uh, that stands over the pool area, delaminating into uh, the system of stair in between the building, uh, connecting the, the sloped wall with light to that central object, which is covering the, the, the pool area, which is here. So the object, a range object you saw is on the right of the image, and it becomes a roof that contains all the functions which are on top of the, of the pool. And uh, the black object has that inclinated roof and contain an interior soccer field on the other side. This is the pool area. Material. Uh, material is uh, it's an, an important uh, element of, the, of uh, the development of different project. In this case, I, I wanted to, to show you our proposal for the the Musée des Beaux-Arts uh, of Montreal, not winning the competition, but it was about understanding material. So this was an addition to uh, the actual uh, uh, Musée des Beaux-Arts of Montreal, uh, uh, a very simple cubic element that has to be built. So, and we were asked at the beginning, because the rest of the museum is made of uh, white marble with black veins on, to use black marble, but I didn't want to use black, black marble considering it as a cladding. So I said to myself, how can I build and understand marble? So the first thing we did is to, is to cast a, a burn wood piece and to cast it into, uh, into a piece of, uh, of uh, resine to create a cube that at the end contain the energy and as, uh, associate the, the system of circulation to the vein that goes through the, the, the marble. So to make them visible on some face by slicing the cube or invisible within the, the building. So we thought that understanding that we can then uh, look, for example, that beautiful image by Edward Bertinsky that says that marble has a third dimension, not only a one dimension has been assimilated to uh, a cladding to, to a building. So that object then was separated from the ground to create a ground floor, a basement. It's a bit like you hit the ground with a piece of rock and the trace you find is the reference to the project. And then the space created potential public space, the exhibition being contained in that cubic element, which is right at the top 
of the of this uh, movement on, on the ground. So it's the same image, just like separating two elements from a simple cube to create a space, which is uh, simply created by the distanciation of, a, of an object from the, the ground. So this is how it developed as uh, three very large exhibition space on top of the of the central space, and you see all the this idea that the, the the veins of the black the black veins in the in the marble uh, emerge from it or slice from the surface to to become the connecting circulation or something that extend. Uh, under the white cube to become the, the structure of it. So this is the system of circulation made of a uh, burned wood just to represent this idea. This is the object that was contained within the, uh, the resin just before that uh, I destroyed by, by putting it into, uh, into a resin. So uh, all the plans were designed in that idea of, uh, so this is an interpretation of that first object in cardboard that then will be contained, uh, connecting three exhibition space and uh, lobby and services at, uh, at grade. So this is how the plan end up being organized with the circulation on the side of the cubic element and contained within it to become uh, the project. So at the end, uh, when you look at that uh, super M, you can uh, again refer to the Edward Bertinsky image, which says that it's a, it's a, it, they are cubic elements superimposing on the site and excavated from, from inside to create the, the system of circulation and to contain art at the end. And a beautiful view in the in the winter time that talks about the the, the connection of that very pure white uh, whitish object on the on the site in a different sun condition. Under the cube, you'll find a open space for uh, children and the interior space, so you really feel the presence of that very heavy and strong ob object on top of your of your head. And then as a last project, technology. Why? Uh, because we were talking about nature since the beginning, but I thought that uh, we enter in a new era now in which technology, communication technology and everything will, will, will take a, a, a bigger place. Uh, this is a, a project that we are doing now, which is in, under construction for a research facility for a quantic, uh, the creation of quantic computer technology. So the highest technology you can, you can find. Uh, and visiting the place, I saw that uh, crazy image of a machine, I forgot the name of it. I always forget it. Uh, that machine is uh, plated in gold and it's used to cool uh, helium uh, because the, those computers generate a lot of heat. So you have to cool them. And this is a machine that is used to, to cool them. But I thought this was an amazing uh, uh, also object that, that, that we can refer to, to to create the project. In the same uh, idea, how can we build a center for it that reconnects to something uh, uh, more important than, than the, the fact of technology, but link it again to natural environment and to the use of certain material inspired by this machine, but that connects it to, in a way. So you, you, the site is, uh, sorry, my pointer doesn't work, but you see some kind of circular shape in, right in the middle of the image. This is the, the site of the, of, of the building. So going again to, uh, to the Criosta, uh, this is the name of the, of the machine. It's about uh, one foot di diameter, uh, one, uh, quite uh, amazing. Uh, amazing object. Anyone looking at it, you're so intrigued by, by it and it's so beautiful that we, we use it as a reference to say, how can we create movement within a building that will be composed of two elements, the base, a circular base, which, uh, which contains all the laboratory, the research laboratory, and 
uh, on that, uh, I would say, geologic object created at grade because of the vibration and the solidity of the wall and the fact that they don't, need, they don't want to have any interference with the exterior world. Uh, how can we build something which is a lively space in that case, using wood. So there's an interesting parallel to make with the, this idea of uh, you, you're working on the highest technology on Earth with something which at the end is very simple, wood, uh, to, to bring back something more natural and create a connection with, for the researcher with natural environment. So this is the base with la the laboratory and uh, the, the, the blackboard, because I'm, this is how I work, I work on blackboard that uh, represent this idea of the connection between a, set, a circle and a square, almost like a tree growing on the, the actual site. So the plans are very simple. You see the different laboratory and services with partially on the ground and on top office, open auditorium, stairs and everything. And I. I refer you to uh, the, this machine I showed you just before, that is kind of a drilling vertical space within the, uh, the, the very square shape of the, the office on the top. So the building will, be, will have a very, very simple presence, a very reflective, uh, made of glass and reflective and opaque glass, standing on a concrete base to contain different space like uh, uh, research uh, studio office and uh, so inside you you everywhere you will feel the presence of uh, of people the wood through the wood the stairs that uh, that refers again to uh, uh, that uh, that are uh, piercing through a diff a different place in the in the uh, in the complex And as you notice, blackboard and whiteboard everywhere, because this is the how science work by people meeting outside of their office to share their research and conversation. So this I just have at the end uh, a couple of images of the thing being under construction. So again, the connection between something very solid, very uh, earthy and something much lighter using wood to, to create that future space. So thank you very much for the... Thank you, Gilles, um, for the amazing lecture. My name is Erica, and I'm going to be moderating the Q&A along with my classmate, Audrey, today. Um, during the Q&A, please type your questions into the chat. Alternatively, we can, um, you can identify yourself in the chat as someone who wants to ask a question and we can unmute you. Um, so I'll kind of get the conversation going with a question for you, Gilles. Um, you showed many images of landscapes and natural processes that you were conceptually inspired by. How do you take those natural concepts and begin to incorporate them into the design process? For example, this model here of the tree root um, is the bridge typically kind of a model that you make um, or an object that you find, or is it more of a conceptual cloud that kind of hangs over the project throughout its design process? It's, it's both in a way because uh, I made this object uh, to, to represent something I had in mind. This, this was made for the, the design of the library in uh, Quebec City. Uh, there is a central circular atrium with a different foyer, what they call foyer. In fact, they are zoned in the library that I want to, to connect together through that central space. So for me, this image is probably the best representation of the fluidity of that connection. So you don't want to be strict and say, I'm going to build a cylinder with space connected to it. What you want at the end is something which is much more natural and fluid. So a better, a best representation of it was the tree. In fact, it's not a tree, it's the root of a tree that I inverted. Uh, I, I found uh, this in the lane, the back lane of my studio and, uh, and, and so by burning it and covering it with resin, I will give it a new life and, and, and do something. So this is the way I work. I use as much photography, found object like rocks or anything. And sometimes I transform them to give them a different representation and 
we become very attached to it. It's uh, there is something about uh, the the idea of the continuity of uh, of when you do develop the project, and you always go back to that as a kind of a poetic reference, which keeps you where you should be when you're designing a, a building using all kinds of technologic elements to. Uh, to to uh, to accomplish it by keeping contact with the poet with with the poetry of what is green design. Another thing I wanted to ask you was, um, I know you didn't show this project today, but in your project um, at the university, the laboratory project, you talk about this idea of um, seeing versus being seen and seeing nature versus being seen from nature. Um, so could you just maybe talk a little bit about the importance of, importance of kind of um, the connection between users of the building and nature from both um, interior to exterior and exterior to interior, those kind of relationships? In fact, you know, uh, glass plane are a con is a convention for uh, climate. Uh, I, I remember giving a lecture uh, in the, in the past in the in the nineties, which was called "60 Degrees of Separation." Uh, that was a joke about the film, but uh, but it means something. Yeah. In certain condition in Canada, you can be minus thirty outside and plus thirty inside, uh, which means that we have to create this barrier. Uh, within the environment, but uh, but at the end, it's a convention to protect people from the outside. So I try to destroy that boundary by uh, making sure that any uh, any time we 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 talk about a connection. So this is not the window or the glass plane which is important. It is the connection of space within the actual space of the environment in both ways. Uh, so the notion of reflectivity. Uh, can be added to that or remove if you want to create an object or make the object to disappear and being that and have no substance uh, with it. So, uh, so generally, I'm uh, I'm I'm very very interested to the, the I will say the the potential of glass to 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 disappear to not be there. And to to use it more as a, as as I mentioned, just a climatic barrier. Thanks, Gilles. That was very informative, especially to us who are in your studio and kind of focusing on all these concepts as well. Um, I guess we'll kind of just hold on and see if anyone else has any more questions. Uh, for now, just type them in the chat below. I, I choose, uh, using that time, I, uh, I can say a couple of things. I choose those projects uh, specifically, and you see project extending from 2000 to the prison, because uh, I really wanted to reconnect to that idea that we're exploring with you uh, guys in the, in the class. But I think this was interesting for people too, to see a range of uh, different idea that at the end connects together to that uh, notion of uh, environment that go much behind the uh, the pure, uh, as I mentioned in the text, uh, the the idea of uh, contemplative or connection with the environment, but being very much anchored to the to uh, to uh, the symbolic aspect of the environment. So this is why I choose those uh, those specific project and others that were abandoned. We are working now on the. Musée d'art contemporain in Montreal, uh, theaters, library, and different uh, project uh, now. But uh, I thought that the project I choose today were more referential to the idea. So we have a question. Um, is there any one lesson you would share with young designers? Uh, sorry, is there? Any one lesson that you would share with young designers? <laughs> Uh, I would say trust your feeling. <laughs> uh, I, no, um, I would say connection, connection with the reality of the of where you built. Uh, this is what we're studying with you guys, a young designer in the, in the class. Uh, Intuition, 
but in, in intuition which is connected to to, to to this idea of understanding where so we we do in the class for example we start by uh, asking them to do a, an object that refers to something they've learned in the past or something that comes from their personal life or or uh, and to 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 use it as a reference to be used in the development of the project so the program became uh, it's art and science uh, earth science uh, and then we analyzing a site but the this object is always there as something that will follow them through all semester so it's like um, it's like saying that uh, you you accept ideas and you accept things that comes from your own life and uh, you use it as a tool for exploration. So you, you can always refer, uh, reconnect to yourself, your concern, your interests, your life, your family, and, uh, and, uh, and carry it through the, the old process of designing something. For sure, uh, when we work in practice, we design for others. Uh, but, uh, but at the end, uh, we use our own tools to serve their personal cause or their personal uh, uh, needs. Uh, so there's not much we can say except that, uh, you know, trusting yourself into a process. We all have something in our life that can be a source of inspiration to, uh, that can be carried through architecture. Um, our next question is from Catherine. Um, what was your first project? How did you get started as an architect? Oh, uh, the first project was uh, a small office building for um, uh, production, uh, publicity production, and cinema production. We were very lucky. Uh, I don't know, uh, that, that happened in life. We were asked to do that, uh, that uh, simple building, but, but the subject uh, was so interesting and it connects us to, uh, to different uh, theater in Montreal. So we start doing theater on the second year. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we, we had a very uh, untypical, uh, atypical is the word, atypical uh, parcours because uh, we were lucky enough to start doing a public building right at the beginning. So we did very little house and, and things. And uh, uh, in, in the late career, we stopped doing uh, some houses, but I, I think uh, we have a limited uh, palette of uh, this type of, uh, of, uh, uh, of project because of, uh, of the fact that we, we, we we were very busy de developing uh, public buildings. So then came, uh, a after uh, theater came university building. And so uh, it's a question of uh, being lucky enough to start at a certain point, but, uh, but let's say that this parcours is a bit atypical from uh, the, normal, the, no the normal one. Uh, what can I say? So the next question is from Justin. Uh, the poetic interpretation of the human relationship to nature is very beautiful within your projects. Does your office also actively pursue green building strategies in a more performative way as well? And is that a big focus within your office? Oh yes, for sure. And but uh, without uh, without uh, before even before it was called uh, uh, what it's called now uh, because now there's a uh, there's all that system to analyze building, if it's lead gold or not, or silver or everything. Uh, we start uh, being concerned by that early in our, uh, in our uh, career. Uh, because, you know, I, I come, uh, something I didn't mention is I, I studied the biology and botanic before I did architecture. And it came back uh, to me after training as an architect and starting project in 2000, this is why I'm showing the First Nation Pavilion as a kind of a key element in the career, a, a moment in which everything changed and that concern and studying I did before uh, came back fully incorporated in the development of building. But you know, uh, in uh, those uh, 
analysis, they are they often forget the uh, human, how human lives, and uh, so you will talk a little very much about uh, the energy, the energy, the, the consuming of energy, and uh, and uh, the use of local material, and they often forget about about human presence and uh, and bien-être, I will say, in the building, something we incorporated quite early in the in the process. Uh, you know, it can be represented through very, very simple gesture, like in the John Abbott College uh, uh, and Mary Edwards building, if some can uh, look to our website and find it, there was a ginkgo tree in the middle of the site. And we were asked to cut it and to do tree floors. And no, we said no. We're gonna keep the, the the ginkgo tree. I said that's a very simple sentence. Like you can't start a science building by cutting a tree, which which was for me uh, absolutely impossible. So the client accept to do six floor, and then we built a beautiful stair in the middle, so people will be will use it as a as a. a uh, uh, a way to go through the building, which is more interesting than back stair or elevators. So at the end, we turned positively the, the conservation of that tree, created a beautiful courtyard around that tree. And the, and the, the tree became the totem of the actual campus. It's called Jack for John Abbott College. And, uh, and, and it's still there and beautiful. So just the conservation of one tree, add, an impact on the health of people using the building by the fact that they're moving, they're walking through the building, by the fact that it's open, by the fact that you have that beautiful courtyard. So this is for me, what is more important than anything else in creating building. Okay, you can do all kinds of technical stuff to make the building uh, uh, efficient, I will say. But what is more important is the way you design it in connection with nature and with the respect of nature. So thank you to Gilles Saussier for joining us for our Daniels Talk Paysage. We'd like to also thank our Daniels Public Programming Committee for organizing this year's series. To see the rest of the Daniels events this year, just head to the Daniels website and go to News and Events. The next event in the series will be the Michael Huff Ontario Association of Landscape Architects visiting critic, Teresa Galli Izzard with her lecture, Landscape, Landscape, Urbanism and the Garden of the 21st Century taking place on Monday, November 23rd from 12 to 1 p.m. So we hope to see you all then and thank you again for coming out today. Thank you, Hall. Have a nice weekend.